one of the most happening in demand and a game for ethical hackers to show their skills a game that will train your brain to actually think like an ethical hacker yes this is ctf capture the flag in computer society is an exercise in which flags are secretly hidden in a purposefully vulnerable programs or websites competitors steal flags either from other competitors that is attack and defense uh, style kind of ctf or from the organizers that is called as a jeopardy style challenge now several variation exist including hiding flags in hardware devices competition exist both for online and in person as well now this game is based on traditional outdoor sport of the same name that is capture the flag now ctfs are a unique and interesting part of a cyber security community i'm not aware of any other career field that does something quite like this i suppose fields like engineering have competitions but i would assume that they are intended for students only and engineering professional themselves don't get much involved with cyber security capturing the flags professionals of all levels get involved to learn they perform some basic cyber attacks on various other platform to get the flag in stepwise vulnerability that we found and later exploit them now if we talk about what is a capture the flag puzzle the term puzzle is often used to refer to one challenge within a ctf competition that leads to a single flag now there are usually three different levels of puzzle difficulty in each competition that is easy medium and hard the difference between the lower level puzzle and the higher level ones is usually in the complexity of the techniques required to find and retrieve the flag for example it is not the basic but little in directional based ctf where we need to find the answer to a puzzle before performing any attack to find the flag now the start of a capture the flag event in many competitions when the actual competition starts you will be given access to different puzzle folder organized based on difficulty the folder will name based on which puzzles content they hold and always contain a readme text file now this is really important you should really read the readme text file which will decide that what you got to have to do next or some other form of directions are definitely given within the text file there are instructions and subtle hints about what the puzzle consists of and what might be required to decode it sometimes the directions are in the form of riddles with you know subliminal messages or maybe the reference to different tools that may be needed to solve it for example sometimes uh, they they can give you a flag in a packet that can be uh, taken out with the help of a tool that is called as a wire shark and there are much more like that and sometimes it's just written out in ambiguous plain text which can sometimes be a riddle in itself now the variations in readme contents and syntax are usually based on the puzzle developer's preference now after completing the puzzle you should be able to locate the flag since the flag is not intended to be hidden once the cyber security task is completed successfully flags are usually marked in obvious ways representing this format like flag contents of flag for example we perform high level cyber attack offensive and defensive side on big level of hacking events and community meetups as well now let's talk about a beginner guide for fresher to enter into ctf events now there are different different types of challenges challenges are typically divided into six categories for ctf some of the common type of challenges are first one is web let's talk about web now this type of challenge focus on finding and exploiting the vulnerabilities in which web applications they may be the test for the participant uh, to check their knowledge of sql injection xss that is also called as cross site scripting and many other web attacks the second one are the forensic type now participants needs to investigate some sort of data like uh, do a packet analysis on the .pcap file or maybe the memory dump analysis can be given and so on the third one is cryptography now challenges will focus on decrypting and encrypting the strings from various types of cryptography such as a substitutional crypto and you know they, uh, they can give you to uh, decipher and cipher it and many more fourth ones are the reversing or you can also call it as a reverse engineering now re usually needs a participants to explore a given binary file whether pe file or elf file or maybe sometimes apk file or some type of other executable binary file 
Now participants need to find the key by decompletion or you can say the disassemble using static or dynamic analysis or you can use some other reverse engineering tools as well. Fifth one are the OSINT. The OSINT idea is to see how much information is available to you and understand the underlying hints hidden in the challenges themselves with the help of Google and with problem solving skills. So more tools like Sherlock, no focus on domain enumeration, etc. Sixth one are really the good ones, based on your IQ, that's why I call it as a miscellaneous. Now everything is not listed and you know, you know else uh, it is still relevant to information security in this category. This requires Google full skills. In short, you can say uh, it can have anything. I hope you understand by that. Now what are the basic tricks to win the CTF? Now the first one is practice alone. There are tons of ways you can practice for CTF competitions. Many old contestants will upload their past flags and solutions. Folks will often also post write-ups on their security blogs of particularly interesting challenges and puzzles they have solved. Now there is second thing that is required that you should know what is going on in the market. That is you should really follow the news. Now CTFs uh, like to be trendy. They keep up with the ongoing on to other CTFs and security conferences, the things that are going on there and the wider cybersecurity community can be important in giving you an ideas of how to approach the hacks, which uh, vulnerabilities to try and exploit. If you see an interesting proof of concept of hack or exploit online that you can replicate in your home, uh, home lab, uh, take the time to work through it and pick up the new skills. The very important point is build a toolkit. Before you even get to a CTF, you should know that what tool you need to win. As you do practice exercises and go to CTFs, keep a list of tools you find yourself and keep them stored in the place on your computer. Find the approach that works for you and be sure that you spend the bare minimum time at a CTF downloading and researching tools you have used in the past. The most important point is take care of yourself. Like hackathons, it is important for a CTF to keep track of your well-being. If you need to sleep, just do it. You know, make some friends, take time to get to know uh, the other teams at the competition. Be friendly and approachable yourself. Reciprocate and be nice to people who approach you. But strategically, try to keep the important information really close to you. Now, how to get started? If you're brand new to hacking, then find a good course to teach you the skills. You can start up by setting up a Kalinux or a Parrot security lab so you can get hands-on experience immediately. Some of my favorite CTFs are Hack the Box and Try Hack Me. These two websites are in the list of my favorite CTF grounds and I try them quite a lot, which is the reason I'm also thinking to start a series, a free series on CTF. So if you are interested in that, make sure you don't forget to comment down into the comment section. And also don't forget to subscribe my channel and press the bell icon. So this was all the information about what is CTF, how to get started as a beginner, what knowledge you should know, and where are the websites where, can, where you can try these kind of CTF challenges. So that's it for today's video. I'll see you again tomorrow with another video.